Hello and welcome to Records Rebuilds. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the C8Z06 and the LT6, the now almost legendary before it even hits production power plant for that car. Now, uh, in Corvette land, we've got a long history of torque monsters for engines, just instant torque, push you back in your seat. And I think a lot of the old breeders still a little bit worried this engine doesn't have quite enough torque. Uh, on the other hand, we've got the new arrivals who are like, man, this engine is a copy of the Ferrari 458's engine. Now that's a legendary engine. Uh, and it is true that General Motors took that engine apart and copied the best parts of it. Uh, we'll hear from engineers specifically about how they did that. Uh, but it's also true that this car is unique. This engine is unique. Um, it's something uniquely American, a uniquely American version of that high revving flat plane crank. And ironically, one of the things that's really unique is it makes a lot more torque than the engine in that Ferrari 458. So let's have a little look at how they did that. Okay, real quick, we're going to take a walk down memory lane because I want to show you Every engine that has ever been put in the Corvette has just achieved absolute legend status. General Motors is good at building engines, and they only put the best ones in the Corvette. This engine is the Blue Flame 6. Uh, not that impressive an engine by today's standards. Probably everybody, most of the people who know how impressive it is, are dead now. Uh, but... This engine began life in 1939 and eventually developed 150 horsepower. It was only used in the first two years of the Corvette, uh, but in its own day, it was legendary. And it's probably the least impressive of all Corvette engines. This is the legendary small block Chevy. It was a top of the line engine for 40 years. It is often referred to as the winningest engine in racing history. This particular model features a fuel injection unit which was first used in 1963, a good 20 to 30 years before most cars developed fuel injection. Then there are the big block engines from the late 60s and early 70s. The L88 is believed to have produced about 650 horsepower at the flywheel. Then we have the LT5, designed by Lotus and built by Mercruiser, ran from 1990 to 1995 in the ZR1. It was the first double overhead cam engine for the Corvette and still an all-time favorite to this day, just years and years ahead of the competition at the time. Then, starting in 1997, we've got the LS and LT engines still running in the Stingray today. I don't need to tell you how legendary these engines are. They've been shoehorned into everything from Miatas to RX-7s to Porsche 911s. I bring that up for two main reasons. The first is that all of those were rock solid, incredibly reliable engine. There's not a problem child or a brittle engine in that entire bunch. And that's something we've come to expect from Corvette. The LT6 will be a huge disappointment if it isn't just as reliable. The second is that all of those old engines were cross-plane cranks, and they developed an incredible amount of low-end torque. However, this new engine is a flat-plane crank. It revs to 8,600 RPM, whereas those old engines could only get to 6,500, 7,000 maybe in the days before computers when you could push it over the red line. Uh, but they couldn't get the same level of efficiency. This new engine produces more horsepower than any other naturally aspirated V8 in history. But the trade-off is to get all those RPMs, you have to have a shorter stroke. And that is what makes flat plane cranks worse at creating torque. Now, everybody wants to have their cake and eat it too, so we want the horsepower, we want the high revs, but we also don't want to lose any torque, and that's particularly difficult when you're coming off of the C7Z06, which also had a supercharger, which created a lot of torque. So let's take a look at how this engine stacks up. Any comparison has to begin with the Ferrari 458, and that's because GM engineers themselves have said this is one of the best engines ever made. They've openly admitted that they set out to learn from its best features. Let's take a listen to Jordan Lee, Corvette small block chief engineer. Uh, clean sheet, design, benchmark, some of the best competitive engines out there. 
Uh, so we then looked at McLaren, we looked at Ferrari, we looked at Audi, we looked at uh, all the competitors that had anything similar. Uh, so I'm not gonna lie to you, Ferrari, they make really good engines. Uh, the other engine, uh, not so much. Uh, but Ferrari had there was a lot there that uh, we, uh, we examined and looked at, and we learned a great deal from the way they did certain things. And we improved uh, significantly on some of the things like the loop system. Um, a lot of the reason why is because GM is a very good company. We have a lot of resources, which is a fancy word to say money and people, and our analysis capability is beyond the program. So basically, he said they felt like Ferrari made the best flat plane crank V8 by far, and they were able to use the incredible analysis capabilities of a large corporation like General Motors to determine what it did well and what things could be improved upon. This is the 458's torque curve, and of course, the first thing you'll notice is that it tops out at 570 horsepower. That is 100 less than the Z06, and it also tops out at 498 pound-feet of torque. That's 62 less than the Z06. But you'll also notice the orange line there. Uh, the torque curve kind of has a, a peak to it. Um, and we want that to be as flat as we can uh, because we'd like to have a range of, of RPMs where we can make good torque with this engine. Now take a look at the C8 Z06 torque curve. And look at that same torque curve for this car. It's much flatter. There's only about 40, 50 points from the lowest point to the highest point once you get past about 3,000 RPMs. Now, most of that disparity can be chalked up to displacement as the LT6 is a liter bigger. As they say, there's no replacement for displacement. And what's more American than taking an engine and simply making it bigger? However... Corvette engineers use a cool trick to try and make that torque curve as flat as possible. It's called a Helmholtz resonator, and let's take a look at what it does. You may have noticed that there's a huge black box sitting on top of this engine. That's kind of weird because it's quite a bit bigger than the supercharger that used to sit on top of the C7 Z06. What does that thing do? Well, they're two big intakes, two long chambers. Uh, air comes in the back of them and goes forward. And they've got this cool little trick where there are three valves that can open and close between the two chambers. They use those valves to tune the airflow so that it flows into the engine as quickly and as smoothly as possible. Okay, so just a quick science demonstration here. If we take this empty beer bottle and we blow on it, we get one sound. Then, if we take that same empty beer bottle and we fill it with water, I think you can see that in there, it's going to make a different sound. So the Corvette engineers are doing the same thing with these valves. They're using the opening and closing of the valves to change the length of the chamber and the size of the chamber to change the frequency with which the air vibrates and how well it flows. Now let's take a look at these valves in action. As you can see here, the front two valves are linked to each other and they open in one direction while the rear valve is separate and opens in the other direction. Now let's see what effect that has on torque. If you read the key on this graph here, you'll notice that the black line is for when the computer is opening and closing these valves to achieve the best of all worlds. The purple dotted line is with all the valves closed. The red dotted line is with the front two valves open. The green dotted line is with the rear valve open. And the blue line is with all the valves open. As you can see, the computer achieves the best of all worlds by simply picking which configuration is best for which RPM. So now let's compare that LT6 to the crossplane cranks in previous Corvettes. Now it's not really fair to compare it to the C7 Z06 because there's a supercharger on there. And if you put this thing on the track for more than just a couple of laps, that supercharger is going to heat soak and it's not going to offer nearly as much benefit. But you can see uh, it did get 652 
torque at its peak and that's quite a bit more than the 460 that the c8 z06 gets uh, but you can see this is a very peaky torque curve it really falls off as we head towards red line in the top end uh, whereas you remember that c8 z06 uh, it's got a very flat torque curve of course the great news for the c8 z06 is that even though the lt6 can't make quite as much torque as a forced induction crossplane crank engine it still gets through the quarter mile faster than the C7Z06 because of tires, a dual clutch transmission, and a more aggressive final drive ratio that's geared to help acceleration. Let's take a look at something else naturally aspirated to give our C8Z06 more of a fair fight. This is the torque curve for the LT2 engine that resides in the C8 Stingray. Uh, as you can see here, that's a pretty peaky torque curve as well. Now the Stingray actually does have a peak torque that is five pound feet higher than the C8Z06, but you can tell it's just that little tip of the of the curve there that gives you that extra five pound feet of torque. And really for most of the operating range, the C8Z06 is actually making more torque. When you combine that with the uh, more aggressive final drive ratio and the tires and the dual clutch transmission obviously it's no contest that the C8Z06 is going to accelerate a lot faster. Okay so that's the LT6 maybe not the torque monster that we've seen in generations past with the forced induction cars but among the naturally aspirated flat plane crank high revving engines it is a torque monster that's something I'm really excited about. It's a careful calculation that General Motors has made, uh, and I'm really excited to see how it works out on the track when we start to get some lap times in in a few months. Until next time, see you later, guys.